What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Real Estate Served on the Rocks. My name is Charlie Sardelli, and as always, I'm here with Jameson Amaros, Oscar Barra, and we're three Colorado real estate agents that love talking about real estate and drinking bourbon. So every week, we sit down on this podcast and bring you, the consumer, information to hopefully help you make the home buying process a little bit easier. While we're doing that, we enjoy some fine bourbon, right? So guys, remember, like, follow, subscribe. Our episodes come out weekly, video as well as audio. Uh, you can find us at Living in Colorado, The Mile High Perspective. So subscribe to still make sure that you catch all of our episodes as they pop up, especially because we like to do episodes that are timely mm -hmm. per like the last two weeks, right? So uh, today's topic, we're going to be covering property taxes in Colorado. First thing that we want to cover for you guys is overall the hell of property taxes. How are they How are they made up or how are they found out? Um, and then we're going to cover some of the changes that are happening here in Colorado, because if you have been privy to the news recently, you're seeing that, holy crap, in 2024, property taxes are going to skyrocket and you're going to pay up to 40% more. So we want to break that down for you. We're going to cover what it was with the Gallagher, uh, the Gallagher Act, what that did. And then we're going to kind of move into what's going on in this period of time after the Gallagher Act was repealed. And we're going to try and sum up and, and talk about some of the options that are on the table right now for legislation as to how how we might get relief or how they might help. So stay tuned. This is going to be an action-packed episode. Um, we're really, really excited to bring it to you. So are we going to have a disclosure or the really fast-talking guys? I yeah, said, right. <laughs> the, views, the, the views and information uh, in this yeah. podcast are not subject to it. <laughs> yeah, so just because it's we not. We are not it's, financial. We're, yeah, yeah we're, not, we're not financial advisors. We're not tax accountants, and we're not going to disclose our, our po political yep. uh, agendas yep. or what we represent. This is not for that. This is just to try to understand what the hell is about to happen, may happen, and what you can do to prevent it or Make it happen. Yeah. And Oscar, you bring up a phenomenal point, man. It is, it's so much of this is tied back to politics, obviously, because legislation, right? They when have, you start they talking about to... repealing and amendments mm -hmm. and stuff like that, it gets ugly. People right? get very, very, very whoa. Yeah, exactly. But especially it. when those things touch people's wallets inappropriately. Mm -hmm. But like I said, guys, that's why we're here because yep. we are real estate professionals and we do look at the market and know the market very closely, especially related to property taxes. That's something that we have to know about when we're helping somebody buy or sell a house. So we want to go ahead and try and clear that up for you to the best of our knowledge. I know I've spent, again, another you know day and a half, two days just deep diving on this just so I can bring you guys the most accurate information. And like Oscar said, we're not going to touch the politics of it. We're going to give you the facts, pros, cons, mm -hmm. um, and see how it goes. But with we that being said- We might poke at it. We won't touch yeah, it. We, we might poke, we might poke, poke a little poke bit. A little bit. Yeah. yeah, upset hey, the bear. do right? something. Yeah. <laughs> Is it alive? Is it alive? <laughs> right. Um, but today, this is actually going to be a really cool bourbon for us um, here on the podcast because, Jameson, how'd you, how'd you choose this one? Uh, well, I walked into Bubbles and I was like, hmm, what should we drink today? And then I saw this and it said Castle and Key. And my head went to, well, Castle is like an old school house. Key is how you get into your house. If you don't pay your property taxes, somebody takes away your key in your house. <laughs> Yes, they do. So yes, I figured do. it'd be kind of a cool thing to, uh, you know, to sip on. And, yeah. you know, we're all we're all lords of our own castle here and mm -hmm. wherever you live. And we have to pay taxes to the fiefdom wherever you live. Uh, so I figured it'd be a good, uh, a good <laughs> see, one. See, my brain works a lot different. My, <laughs> first of all, at all times, there's like a song playing in the back of my mind. Yeah. It's like you could randomly say, what song? And I'll be like, Jay-Z's <laughs> New York. <laughs> I did, Oscar just has a running uh, a running yeah. soundtrack. Yeah, it's just constantly. And then my brain would have been like, Lock and Key, Netflix. Oh, season two is out. I haven't watched it yet. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a mess. So it would well, have not even gone towards real estate. I'm just going to throw that on, out there. Uh, on today's episode, we are, we, we did, although we did grab a, a bourbon that is kind of out of our wheelhouse that we haven't had before, we did get a small batch. Um, and, and as you guys know, we've done small batches before, but the purpose of small batch bourbon is to be more of a specialized kind of tailored bourbon and taste. So they put a little bit more effort into it. Um, and, and Castle and Key here, it I mean, color wise, the bottle in general, I, I, I dig the bottle. It kind of reminds me of a, uh, what what's the the elderflower liqueur? The thin bottle with the oh. striations on it. Oh, uh, uh, Saint Germain. Saint, Saint Germain. Germain. Yep, yep. yep. It kind of reminds me of a Saint Germain bottle with the with it the really does. cut. I have some at home actually. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I would probably go good with this, but who knows? We'll see. Um, so, what I'm going to do is go ahead and shut up because I've taken a, the most portion of this intro here. And I'm going to let uh, the guys talk about Castle and Key a little bit. So, yeah, shut up, Charlie. Take it? Damn it, Charlie. <laughs> shut up, Meg. Yeah. <laughs> you want to take it and I'll pour? Or? 
No, I, I don't care. I didn't. I didn't. Um, I did briefly some research. If you want to start pouring, yeah. Um, I, I believe during the Prohibition era, nineteen twenty, mm -hmm. the it was it was a distillery owned by E. H. Taylor, and um, obviously uh, Prohibition Colonel hit e. H. Taylor. Colonel okay. E. H. Taylor. <laughs> we learned about this on the VA episode. Yeah, I was calling him by the wrong ranking the <laughs> whole time. Dress them by the correct ranking, <laughs> sir. But he didn't correct me because it was a higher <laughs> ranking. You're watching. I'll remember that. <laughs> Michael. <laughs> Michael. <laughs> no, so uh, Poor Bishop shut him down. And in 2014, um, this distillery uh, purchased it, the ruins of it and mm -hmm. brought it back up to par. Um, so that was quite interesting. While I was reading that, I had to come over here and make sure it was the same E.H. Taylor. Yeah. And uh, it, it is. So that's uh, I'm going to do a little bit more homework on how all that happened and what, you know, how yeah. E.H. Taylor is still going. And right. for the viewers, you guys always know as you're watching, this wall behind us. Yeah, uh, that's E.H. Directly... Taylor right behind yep. Charlie. Right, right over here, this uh, this bottle here is E.H. Taylor. E.H. Taylor is a very well-known brand. Um, so it is interesting that they basically took this and revamped it. Yeah, they have a castle there. There's actually a castle there in Sunken Gardens. And nice. A pretty cool place. That, that's um, cool. It's kind of as far as I got, as far as the history yeah. of it. It's uh, the, the only thing I would add is, you know, all like liquors and whatnot have their day. And back in, I think it was the early 2000s, it was vodkas yep. and clear liquors, mm -hmm. right? And this was initially done before it went dilapidated as like one of the first uh, destination distilleries, right? So if you guys have ever been to uh, Buffalo Trace, Heaven Hill, mm -hmm. anything like that, it's not only is it the distillery, but they've got the tours and they've got food trucks and it's a, it's a whole experience. Well, nice. when they did this back in the early 1900s, that was the purpose, yeah. Um, to make it, it's kind of its first distillery in that, in that sense. Okay. And then as it went along and then all of a sudden vodka had its heyday and the brown liquors kind of went out of style, it started to shut down because it was kind of a, you know, pet project for mm -hmm. E.H. Taylor. Obviously E.H. Taylor stayed around for a long time. Um, and then in 2014, dude saw a picture of it was like, this would be super cool mm -hmm. to renovate. And since then that's what they've done. So, I mean, honestly, what, what I think is really cool that, that we haven't really talked a lot about is how beautiful just the story of bourbon in America is overall, right? I mean, just how you talked about it. Yeah, there, there is not a monopoly on bourbon at all. And it's very much so somebody who sees a broken down distillery mm -hmm. can go, hey, I have the money. I want to try doing this. We even saw that with, what was it, last week? Um, or Woodford? Uh, no, 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 two weeks ago with uh, the, the biochemist who oh, came yep, up with the, yep, yep, yep. right? He literally went to a distillery and was like, Hey, I could do that. And there was nobody there to stop him. He had the money. Yeah, go for it. And I'm sure that there was more involved in that than just High that. West. But now this High is West? this yeah. is directed yep. toward ancient aged. If you do that, make it a good product, please. <laughs> uh, okay. Ancient age, I'm pretty sure they were just like, well, well that barrel? Fuck it. Yeah, we gotta we'll call it. we gotta call Put Gertrude it back. It well, definitely I wasn't good. It wasn't Gertrude even back. a barrel. I it, to me, it was aged in one of those like water containment. Oh, it was, it was definitely buckets. like I just pictured <laughs> a plastic barrel, yeah. like a plastic bucket. No, one of one of those um the gas you know, just like a propane tank. Yeah, a propane <laughs> tank. Um, but uh, you know the saying: "As American as apple pie." Yeah, bourbon's that apple pie. Right? Absolutely. Yep. It, it, there's so much history, um, positive and negative, with bourbon. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, you talk about vodka. Vodka took bourbon away from from at least our generation. Yeah. You know, started in the mm -hmm. '70s. Uh, you know that that generation didn't want to be like their fathers. We talked about that. So. Mm -hmm their fathers drank bourbon, they started drinking vodka. Yep. It was clear spirits at the time. Yep. And then mm -hmm. it just became vodka, shake it, not stir, the Bond effect, James Bond drank it, yep. we're going to drink it, we're cool. Fuck bourbon. Then bourbon had, they, I mean, they were shutting down places mm -hmm. in the in the 80s and 90s. And then, yeah. you know, uh, there's the new school and the old school bourbon drinkers mm -hmm. now. And I think it, it, whichever one you talk to, you're going to have a different story and appreciation for the bourbon. Yeah, yeah. Well, and what's really cool about the, you know, the, just overall history of bourbon is, the reason it became popular again was because it had the opportunity to become un unpopular, mm -hmm. right? And I think Pappy Van Winkle was the was the one that kind of kickstarted it back off again because it created such a a demand in the market Julian. for for bourbon, right? Um, and again, we referenced it before, but there's a phenomenal documentary uh, on Netflix that talks about the rise of Pappy, Buffalo Trace, um, and uh, even Blanton's that which. Pappy Gate, right? I yeah. What it was. Uh, well, there's Pappy there's Gate. Neat, which is a one good, that yeah. you should you should watch. Yep, it's an awesome one. Very good. It's a lot of Buffalo Trace guys are on there, and um, Pappy Line. Yeah, Pappy Line's a great book. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, it was Heist. Heist. Heist is the series. Heist, and it was it was called Pappy Gate. Yep. 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 Yeah. That talks about it. But 
now that this has been sitting open for a little bit, let's go ahead and, uh, and get those sips in. Get the cheers in first, of course. I didn't even have a pregame <laughs> sip, so. Cheers. So, I mean, right off the bat, I will say that um, the heat on this is evident. Um, it This is definitely one that, that hits your nose, and I could... You know, for our viewers that aren't aren't very bourbon heavy, I would I would say that like this. Yeah, right. The guy was going to do that it. video. We should <laughs> stitch that in yeah. and then uh, throw it out. He, he he pours it, swirls it, and just flings, flings it out of the glass. So I was like, what in the hell? Um, but I will say that like somebody who who is new to bourbon who hasn't been doing it, I can see how just by the the nose on this, the heat, they wouldn't touch it. Hundred percent. What's the proof? Uh, hundred. Hundred. Yep. Yeah. But I mean, we've yeah, had the mash had, bill. I have it up here. So the mash bill is seventy three percent white corn, ten percent wheat, seventeen percent malted barley. Oh, so it's going to be fire. Interesting. So it'll be fire. Yeah. Um, Interesting. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I can't. I mean, the spice fire is not bad. I mean, I, I mean, it's not Booker's by any means. I almost can't. Booker's will. I almost can't face. smell past the burn. On the on burns. The, yeah, on the nose, like the the ethanol. I, I, I get kind of a, a peachy. Nectarini kind of <laughs> exactly, <Joe. laughs> exactly. It might be my sinuses, but I don't know. I'm just saying. Uh, initial burns not not horribly bad. It's a it's it's light and crisp as well. Okay. Get that sip in, yeah. They also use pods to blend their small batch bourbons. They use what? Pods. Oh, pods. Each pod is created by grouping barrels to create a sensory profile. Mm. Which they also they Stem. highlight. That their bourbon is, they take pride in the heat coming off. I was into the okay. Nose. Yep. I was gonna say that that that's very evident mm -hmm. with this. And that first sip, you know, it, it's it's hot. It's definitely hot. Um, I get the spice for sure. As far as complexity goes, I'm sure after it opens up, we'll get a little bit more because even now, as I'm talking, some of those sweeter notes mm -hmm. are coming through on the back end. Yep. But up front, for me, I don't know about you guys, it's really just really just heat. I'm getting some vanilla. Yeah, I got a little bit of vanilla. Um, which is weird right a, a lot of the bourbon they're saying characteristics are the same yeah so i mean you should be this is what the their official uh tasting notes would look like uh caramelized sugar pie crust roasted mm -hmm. cashews dried apricots grains of paradise fennel with a finish of dark honey hints of black pepper which there's that heat mm -hmm. and then medium bodied in sweetness yeah I would agree i could yeah i, I didn't i didn't get that far so i, I, I had i went yeah. in blind aged aged well, four years yeah. I was going to say it's, I did, now that you mentioned the honey, I see the honey on the back end. Mm -hmm. and, and apricots, what I was smelling. Yeah. yeah I can get the roasted too. cashews a little bit. It is yeah. kind of like a, like a smoked flavor mm -hmm. almost. I'm honestly, I'm, I'm probably going to let this, I'm not going to sip it for a while. I'm just going to let this one kind of open while we're, uh, while we're talking. I know I have a lot of, a lot of stuff on my mind. I'm probably going to have two pours. I like it. And roll. I like Let's it. Let's go. So on that note, um, guys stay tuned obviously for the end, for the review of the bourbon, but we're going to move into this topic uh, today, which overall topic we're talking about is property taxes um, as related to Colorado, right? And I'm going to play the advocate of the consumer just because I've, I've been busy with with work mm -hmm. and you know what? I love this podcast, but clients come first. That's right. And uh, I, came, I came in a little rushed, so I, I understand real estate taxes, but the mm -hmm. whole Gallagher, I had to do a little bit more insight and how is it going to affect us and then what side of the fence you want to stay on. And why? So there's pros and cons on both sides. So here's here's the beauty of it, right? We're gonna learn. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. we're gonna Kevin learn. Hart, we gonna learn today. We're gonna learn today. I'm gonna we'll we'll learn on. today. <laughs> pass that on to you guys. Yep, yep. So what we want to cover first for you guys overall is just property taxes, right? You you hear about it growing up. You hear about it in the news, all about it. So what are property taxes, and how are they how are they assessed? How do you find out? Yeah. So property taxes are are, are simple once you know the formula, yep. right? And what you guys have to understand is that is how any local or state government gets funding mm -hmm. is property taxes, right? Mm -hmm. They get it from sales tax, property tax, income tax, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Property tax is just one of those categories. So, And it's not like a when you one-time purchase, you pay the taxes on. It's right. ongoing annually. Yeah, yeah, ongoing annually. So the, the way property taxes are determined is based off of three factors. You're going to have your actual real property valuation, like what your home is currently worth from the year before, the two years before, you're gonna have the tax assessment rate, mm -hmm. which is a percentage set by the state individually, right? Mm -hmm. That is then multiplied by your value of the home. Mm -hmm. And then in Colorado, we have mill levies, 
that vary. And it's essentially a small dollar amount per thousand dollars of value on any sort of property, real, mm -hmm. uh, real, pro sorry, uh, residential property or commercial, right? Yep. The unique part about Colorado is we have Metro tax districts. Yep. And the reason we have those is because we try and spread out the burden of taxes mm -hmm. so that if you're in a new development or an older development, you're not paying for somebody else's improvements if you're not going to have a use or a benefit towards them, yep. right? Mm -hmm. So in order to calculate your property taxes, you get your real property valuation, you multiply it by the assessed rate, which in Colorado currently 6.7%, and then you multiply that by whatever the mill levy is, which mm -hmm. you can look up at the county assessor's office, and that will give you what your yearly tax burden is. Yep. To calculate it. And then you can break that down by month. It should be taken out via escrow. If it's not, you pay it yourself. Mm -hmm. Whatever that looks like, it'll get broken down at a month, right? So for yep. example, my house, last time I was assessed, call it $511,000 at a 7.27% assessed rate. Mill levy in, in uh, Castle Rock right now, I think is like 68 mils, somewhere around mm -hmm. there. So my property taxes average between, call it 25 and $3,100 per year. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's how you do it. Well, and and another thing to note on that, and again, if you if you are listening outside of the, the state of Colorado, please look up your how your personal property taxes are mm -hmm. are calculated um, in in your in your home state. But overall, property taxes are there to help supplement and pay for goods services from the government to the public. It's how it's been, how it's going to be, how how you know how we kind of got where we are, and right? also new construction. Right. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. when you purchase your, your home, the, the evaluation is um, it's on just raw land. Mm -hmm. So your your property tax are ridiculous, ridiculously low. Let's yep. call it 500 bucks. Mm -hmm. And then when they assess your property and they saw that you bought it for 700,000, well, that 500 bucks divided by 12, that's mm -hmm. what you're thinking. Yep. It's more yep. like, you know, eight grand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and what the, makes and the it's important substantial. Thing to, yeah. The important thing to recognize when you're looking at taxes and we're going to get into this a little bit is those three factors that we mm -hmm. just talked about can all change Absolutely. on a yearly, annually, uh, or twice a year, sorry, biannual bi bi yeah. uh, mm -hmm. rate, depending on what the Metro tax district budget is. If yep. things got paid off, depending mm -hmm. on the amount of new properties that are within a said county that can drive down the the assessed rate and obviously home valuations, which yep. is the big hot topic that everybody got when exactly. you went to your mail and you opened up your scarlet letter, mm -hmm. which is what I'm calling it, yeah. uh, and saw like, holy shit, what is this? And something important to note as to why this is such, I don't want to say a big deal, but almost precedented in, in Colorado's history is, is two different reasons, right? First off, Colorado has something called the, the TABOR. So it's the, the tax, basically our tax bill of rights. And what that does in the state of Colorado is any changes that are made to taxes must be voted upon by the, by the, the constituency. Public. Yeah, by the constituency of, of that county and or area. Um, secondly, the reason that this is such a big deal is, and we're going to kind of talk about the Gallagher Act, but what Colorado has seen over the last four to five years is an unprecedented growth in home price valuation, right? Um, in some areas, homes have gone up over 10% in the last five years. No, we're talking 35 to 60%. Yeah, it's been yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, we talk about a normal market going anywhere from 3 to 7% year mm -hmm. over end. There was that summer that we were going 20% month yeah. over end. Yep. It was it was dumb. Yeah. And looking and, at it right now, if you look at the Denver metro area, you're anywhere from 10% to 60% home price or home mm -hmm. valuation increase since call it 2019. Yeah. And which is which is incredible, right? And and honestly, as a homeowner, you look at that and you go, "Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting the money." But but two things. Go ahead. We have we have we had something in in action called the Gallagher Act um, that essentially helped to regulate property tax here in Colorado. And if you're looking to move to the state, something that you probably have seen a lot of is Colorado has the low, one of the lowest property taxes in the nation, right? We are the sixth lowest. Yep. We're, yeah. We're the sixth lowest, but we're also the 15th lowest in, in business. business correct. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So with that said, yes, we all love our value going up on the house, but you got to understand two things. Your taxes are going to go up because you're taxed on the value of your home mm -hmm. and your insurance is going to go up because you have to have proper insurance. And I think it's a risk assessment that they do. Yep. And, and, and mine went up a thousand dollars. My premium went up a thousand dollars and I called my insurance agent and I was all up in arms and I'm a realtor. And he's like, Oscar, calm the hell down. Your house is worth more. I was like, Oh yeah, yep. sorry. All right. Well, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> yep. I'm sorry for the phone call. Yeah. Those are two things that you got to understand. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's a benefit, 
but there's also a cost to it. Yeah, absolutely. And well, people get mad because, and I, and I get it, right? Like you guys look at it and you go, well, I'm being taxed on what's what amounts to an unrealized gain, mm -hmm. right? But at the end of the day, the only way to avoid that is if all of you people watching, which if you want to do this, call us, sell their house every two years. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right? And well, I'd love to have as, that client. You know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then you can get the capital gains tax and you have to pay all these different things. Mm -hmm. If that was the case, then yeah, you wouldn't need property taxes, yep. but the, 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 the state needs funding mm -hmm. and home values are the one of the biggest chunks that they get to provide for schools, for fire, for the police, so on and so forth. Yep. Are there things that get snuck into bills that we don't really like? Yes, 100%. Mm -hmm. Does everybody like taxes? No, I've never heard anybody that says I love taxes because it's a very, we talked about this earlier. Yeah. Um, it's not a very transparent process. Yeah. Like I can't give <clears throat> Oscar a dollar and say, hey, Oscar, go buy me my rock star. And then Oscar comes back and goes, here's your rock star. Mm -hmm. In taxes terms, I give Oscar that dollar. I might not see that dollar or that rock star for 10 years. Yep. Forget about it. And then he comes back and goes, hey, do you remember when you bought this? And it's half the rock star that I asked mm -hmm. for, right? Yep. And, and now what we're seeing uh, is, as we said earlier, the property property valuations have gone up right mm -hmm. and basically what the gallagher act did was yeah. it thank set, you zillow's estimates yeah, right. legit and not rockstar bang <laughs> fuck your bang um so what what rockstar, the gallagher act did it, it was basically something that uh was enacted in the in the 80s here in colorado and it set That's a standard and a, and a base level rate for property tax and business tax right uh business property taxes so what it said was 45 percent of uh, the total budget could not was had to be had to come from residential, and then fifty five of that budget had to come from business commercial. business commercial, Correct. right? Um, and what ended up happening is with these record advancements in home evaluations, we started to see a, a weight that was kind of shifting, yeah. right? Yeah, basically the the home that the home values outpaced mm -hmm. that budget, and yes. the reason it got brought on was back in the seventies across the United States. There's this uproar, right, mm -hmm. um, around property tax increase. You know, it was a yep. property tax increase revolt. So Gallagher brought in an amendment and said, hey, here's the deal. In Colorado, 45% of our taxes right now are coming from residential and 55% are coming from our business. So let's just cap it yep. and say no matter what happens, only 45% can come from residential property taxes. Mm -hmm. Well, what ends up happening is as property values increase, right? And houses get built and people move into Colorado, you're going to have more homes, therefore more property taxes available for consumption by the state. Mm -hmm. Well, if you can't exceed 45%, the only way to make sure you don't hit that cap is if you continue to lower the assessed rate. Yep. So for example, in 1982, the assessed rate on a property tax home was 21%. Mm -hmm. It has gone down every single decade to where it is now down to 7.5 one seven percent as yep. of last year right mm -hmm. what that means is because there's a cap on the residential side well you still got to hit 100 percent. that's right so who now pays for it business small businesses mm -hmm. or businesses in and Colorado. at the rate that colorado is growing that's not sustainable as of right now mm -hmm. right so what we saw was in 2020 as we were coming up on such limited budgetary information because of the pandemic coloradans were given the opportunity to repeal gallagher Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, what's interesting is I, I had to drop Alicia off at work a little bit earlier today. So I took the time and I just wanted to survey, just wanted to walk around and ask people some questions. Right. So as a, I went to a coffee shop, I went to a restaurant and I just wanted to ask them like, hey, my name's Charlie. You know, two simple questions for you. One, do you own a home? Yes or no. Two, do you understand what's happening to your property taxes and what you vote, what we voted for in 2020 to repeal the Gallagher Act? Out of the 11 that I that I spoke with. Four of them were homeowners. Out of those four, one person, one person knew what was happening and or had been contacted to talk about their, their property value and their, and their property taxes, stuff like that. That scared the shit out of me. Oscar, but does that surprise you? It, it doesn't surprise me, and this is why. Yeah. One, a lot of that stuff's, you know, just vote on it. We, yeah. we, we, we got this, exactly. right? That's the way they, they present it. Mm -hmm. And two, as a homeowner... Everybody out there that's a homeowner, this isn't something that's in your face. It's in your face once yep. a year. Why? Mm -hmm. Because the mortgage uh, company is, takes care of your taxes. Yep. Because one, they want to be the only lien on your property. They take care of the taxes because guess what? If you're, you don't pay your taxes, Uncle Sam's first lien. Bank doesn't want that. So they'll, they set up the escrow account. So you never see that. Mm -hmm. You just get the quote unquote 
invoice that comes in and then mm-hmm. you take it to your tax preparer and then you write the taxes off. And same with your insurance because their asset needs to be insured. They take care of that. So you don't you don't see this monthly. You don't yep. you feel it. If, if it goes up 18%, we talked about that, mm-hmm. right? If it goes up 18%, depending on where, where you're taxed, it's going to be a difference of $75 to $120 monthly. Mm-hmm. It, does that sting? Yes. Is it life changing? Probably not. So you're not you're gonna you're not gonna be up in arms. So as a consumer, don't feel bad if you don't know. But it's 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 because it's it's not in your face and it's not going to be promoted. Like, hey, what do you think? Well, and to that point, that what the, I, most amendments are pretty, pretty foggy. Yeah, yeah. Well, and to that point, what I, the reason I wanted to bring that up was in that four, one knew what it was, and then another one was like, oh yeah, that was the that was the thing we voted on in 2020 to help increase funding for for public schools, right? Yes, it did that. But what it also did was get rid of the standards that we have for your property taxes. Correct. And the problem with that is, with me at least, okay, it's going to serve a purpose. Mm-hmm. Make sure that purpose isn't skewed because I see a lot of the, the business side of it. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they had presented it on the news as the businesses are already struggling with keeping staff. Mm-hmm. Is it they're keeping staff? Because I, I want to go, I want to talk to our local. Um, place here at the Great Divide because yeah. every time they're like we're understaffed, we're understaffed. Why is it is it a mo- monetary pro- uh, problem or mm-hmm. a staffing problem? Yeah, nobody wants to go back to work. Well, what, what what is that right? Yeah. So there there is there is that. Um, we can get some macroeconomics. No, yeah. well, you guys. <laughs> oh, oh, we, we we will get into yeah. it where it's just like mm-hmm. I have a headache. Right. Yep. Uh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I, no, no, I, no. I, and it, it, that's exactly it, though. Is is that that was my whole point in bringing it up is. The importance of looking at your legislation. And like you said, all this stuff happens at the back end, right? And I feel that it is an unfortunate, you know, turnabout of our democracy and of our government that at the end of the day, a lot of people do have the faith that they will enact things that will help me, stuff like that. And yes, whereas that is the case, you still have to take the time to read through and understand what's what? going on before just voting on on something and going, oh yeah, it's just for this one thing. Well, and not only that, where I was going with the, with, my, with my little rant was, it's 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 government checks and balances, right? Mm-hmm. What are you going to replace this with? What is our our yep. option here? Mm-hmm. Okay, we're going to do away with it, and then we just yep. gotta we gotta eat whatever you're going to pour, put in front of us. Mm-hmm. No question it. All right, what what wh- okay? What is going to go into place? Yeah, because it's still going to be oh. it's going to be substantial. Oh, Oscar, it's almost if, like if my my ta- if if that, if it goes through, <laughs> my taxes are going to double. Oscar, it's almost like I paid you for double that, for that well, transition. Well, well, hold on, I don't, we, we gotta we gotta pause for a second. Because I, this is, this, let me bring the mic back. Yeah. The, this is important. So when we talk about, what is the saying? Robbing Paul to pay Peter. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, now we got religious. <laughs> well, no, isn't you say Robin Hood. I mean. Yeah, it's Robin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, he lived in a castle. Uh, so here's like a real life thing. Yeah. Okay. So let's say the Gallagher Act was not repealed in 2020. Mm-hmm. Okay. Based on, I'm going to touch two points. The first one is based on the home valuations, because mm-hmm. you guys have to understand something. The, the The letter you guys got in the mail is for 2024. Yep. Where's my letter? I think my wife threw it away. Taxes <laughs> are paid in arrears, which means 100%. you pay 2024 for 2023. Yep. Okay. They have to now evaluate home values for 2023. So they look at sales data mm-hmm. from 2020 to 2022, because it's every two years on the odd year, yep. right? So that being said, what they looked at was home values are going to skyrocket because if you bought a house, if you sold a house, if you were on Zillow, if you got a letter in the mail from Open Door, mm-hmm. home values are absolutely insane, okay? Yes. What that meant was that the state of Colorado was looking at it going, okay, if Gallagher stays in place and we can't breach that 45% budget, mm-hmm. we have to now decrease the assessed rate on property taxes yep. to 5.8%, right? Mm-hmm. From what it was currently at 7.1. 7. That's mm-hmm. massive. Huge. Huge. Oh, yeah. From a math standpoint, what that means is businesses are now going to pay five times more mm-hmm. than residential in taxes. That yep. means two things. Mm-hmm. Number one, if I go to any business and their tax bill is now five times more than what it was before, what happens to the price of goods? Go up. It goes up. Mm-hmm. Where if it goes up, it's you get charged as a consumer, right? That's right. So you're paying, you're playing this balancing act of yes, I want to fund schools, fire, infrastructure, et cetera, mm-hmm. 
but some of it has, does have to come from property. And if we lower it to the point where there's a cap and the businesses have to pick up the tab, essentially you guys are now picking up the tab, right. regardless of what it looks like. <clears throat> and, right? when, and, and, and I, brought a, I brought in my, my tax yeah. that you saw. When I saw it lower, it freaked me out. Yeah. I don't like when stuff goes down because we're paying for it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I'm Correct. like, no, 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 no. So now here's, what's going on? Yeah. So let me play devil's advocate on that. On the flip side of that, say they do, and second home uh, investors are getting taxed what they should. What's that going to do to the rental market? Yeah. Right. So, and this is and this mm -hmm. is the interplay, right? You're going so, to pay for it somewhere. Well, either even if it's not it, rental market or not, right? Yep. If if taxes go up on landlords, you're going to pass that to the renter mm -hmm. and rent's going to go up, right? In the mm -hmm. midst of us seeing rent actually come a little bit back down to earth over yep. the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. Here's the other piece of this that people don't understand. You brought up Tabor earlier, yep. right? Mm -hmm. So the fact that you have to now vote for tax increases, mm -hmm. okay, means that if I am in a rural area of Colorado yep, and I'm Hugo, I if knew I'm you were Hugo, gonna say Hugo. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say silt, the western nope. slope. If I'm Hugo. using Hugo. <laughs> or hell, dude, Evergreen, whatever it yeah. is, right? If I'm in I an like area Summit County. that is not necessarily growing as quickly as the front range, mm -hmm. I have less taxes to pull from property taxes because the home values aren't going up, right? Yep. Well, then the only way to offset that is to vote on a tax increase. Mm -hmm. Who votes on tax increases? Like votes yes. Nobody. Yep. So what ends up happening is mm -hmm. this the Gallagher Act was kind of skewing everything to where the front range was dictating yep. what the tax policy was for the rest of the state mm -hmm. and the rural areas that need fire, they need school, uh, education and funding, they need infrastructure, they mm -hmm. need uh, water districts, all those different things are being left to the wayside because the residents themselves were not going to vote to increase taxes, but their home values aren't raising. So based on a Gallagher cap, you can only, you can only tax them so much, so they're not getting income there. So yep. by removing it, not saying it's good, bad, or indifferent, this is just facts, mm -hmm. you start to give those areas a little bit more life. Yes. And I think mm -hmm. that portion of it transitions into, okay, if we take it away, yep. what's next? Well, and that's, and yeah, that's what I said earlier, Oscar, it was almost like I paid him for the transition, yeah. right? So we've been saying 2020 and 2023, 24, the hell happened in these last two years, right? So COVID, what, <laughs> right? But what we saw is this was repealed in 2020 and- Looking at the repeal, legisl legislators and, and the government went, oh, shit, if we do this real fast right now, it's going to hurt a lot of people. Well, and so, there are so many unknowns, right? Like yeah. that was repealed in 2020. We didn't understand the full impact oh, yeah. of COVID. And we talked about it off, off camera. Oh, there's a fucking shit show. Right. Yeah. Colorado was in a $3 billion deficit mm -hmm. because of in revenue because of COVID. So now you've got, okay, well, if I keep that capped mm -hmm. and I can only take so much from property taxes and I'm in a $3 billion deal, but I also need funding for K through 12 schools and I need all these different things. Like the people need to understand the money has to come from somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah. It's, and it's, I think it yeah. was a panic, a, a panic move because, yeah. yeah. you know, they dropped the rates into a fictitious mm -hmm. two and a half percent. Yep. Uh, they didn't know what things were going to do. They thought the, the, the mm -hmm. housing market was going to crash and we yeah. were going to sell anything. It didn't. The so it, it, it kind of blew up, yeah. went crazy. They needed funding. Let's, let's, well, what, what do we have? Gallagher the, Act. Let's, let's the, do that. The important, the I think imp that's how it really, oh, yeah. they were well, like, we, need, we need, we need something. Yeah. All right, well, let's grab that. And well, that's what I was saying. But the important word in all this is unprecedented. Yes. Right. Everybody. And this is what I mean. What I was saying earlier is everybody thinks that, oh, these elected officials, we got them there. They're there for a reason. They know everything they, they're going to do. The mm. They're human. They, yeah. they can only adapt to something. And if you have something that is unprecedented, the definition of the words never happened before. How, how are they going to react, right? Well, and here's, here's the fun, this is a fun mental exercise, right? Mm -hmm. For the most part, other than like, if you get rid of like top secret clearance shit. Yeah. Somebody in office at a senator level, mm -hmm. technically has the same access to the same information that us three sitting on this couch. Right absolutely. Now. And so, everybody watching this. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. That That's what it is. Mm -hmm. So you're relying on these people to make predictions. And yes, yeah, sometimes the predictions are terrible. And mm -hmm. obviously hindsight's 2020, right? Yep. If we sat there and like, well, it was COVID, but we actually didn't have any inventory. And that's why, like, yes, I get it. If you now look back at the data, it's, yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, it's simple. We've been underbuilding for 10 years. Yeah. Why didn't we see this coming? But in the moment, mm -hmm. you had an unprecedented exactly. black swan event, I would call it, mm -hmm. right? That that pushed employment, small businesses, revenue, mm -hmm. uh, force people to pick up gig economies, like, so many different ripple effects. Yep. Nobody was going to predict it correctly, mm -hmm. except for the conspirators that caused it all. 
<laughs> just kidding. I don't believe in that. Uh, nobody's going to predict it, right? Yeah. So now what we have is we have to deal with the aftermath and go, okay, what makes sense to do? And now? going forward, how do we figure this mm -hmm. out? Because do property taxes suck? 100%. Does the letter you guys got in the mail suck? 100%. Suck yep. for me, suck for Oscar. If you owned, it would suck for you. <laughs> My parents yes. text me and was like, why is our house worth $840,000? Yep. Can you sell it for eight forty? I go, no. Yep. You can't. But it doesn't, they're not taking into account now. Mm -hmm. They're taking into account two years ago and saying, well, I can't assess every single home individually. Yep. So how do I figure out what to charge in property taxes? I got to take a, a blanket of data within a time period and go mm -hmm. on average in Douglas County, Castle Rock, home prices rose this much for this size house. Cool. That's where it's going to be. Yep. In Castle Pines, Castle Rock, this size house, this is what it's going to be. In Aurora Highlands, this size condo, this is what it's going to be. It's a blanket statement. Are they wrong? Probably. I mean, that's, but that's what you have to do. You have to take the law of averages when you have Correct. such a high, a high amount of things that are involved there, right? Correct. And unfortunately, as you said, that led to the discrepancy that we're seeing between Front Range and these smaller towns. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, depending on what side of the coin you are in politics, mm -hmm. One side is like, this is going to fix everything. Let's run with it. And the other yep. side is like, no, well, we believe in this. Let's mm -hmm. not run with it. And that's where they clash. Yep. Question everything. Yeah. I question everything these days. And, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit on both sides. I mean, whatever. I can understand both sides. Do I lean more towards the area? Absolutely. But my biggest gripe is what are we going to replace it with? Well, and that, yeah, exactly. Let's and ease the pain. What, what let's let's talk about this. Yeah. Let, let's well, do and away that's what I was going to say is when, once in 2020 when we repealed and when we voted to repeal, government took a look at it and went, "Oh shit, we said that we would repeal this, but now look what's going to happen immediately afterwards." So what they did after that, 2020, they basically put a moratorium. They 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 put a two year stop gap mm -hmm. on property tax to try and figure this out. And what that has led to now. Well, what was the stop gap? Go for it. So the stop gap for you guys understanding is, like I said, we, 1982, we started at 21% was our assessment rate. Yep. Right. It's gone down to 7.17% mm -hmm. as of a year and a half ago. Okay. So once it got repealed, what they did was they said, all right, for the next two years, 2023 mm -hmm. and 2024, the assessed rate, right? The tax assessment yep. rate percentage of your home's value is going to be capped at 6.7% yep. for the next two years. Yep. Is it going to completely offset? a 35, 40% increase in home value? No, but it's going to take the sting out a little bit mm -hmm. until they can get something else in place that's going to be a longer term solution. So that being said, if you guys are watching on whatever platform, if you take out that piece of paper, mm -hmm. you'll see assessment rate. It should say, depending on your account, it should say 6.7%. Yep. If you would have got that same letter last year, it would have had 7.17%. The values are different on the home, but that was their attempt to say, let's mitigate a little bit of exactly. this increase so that we can fit, like essentially buy time, yeah, really, yeah, that's to find thing. something yeah. that's gonna, that's because, gonna... and again, because of how reactionary the repeal was, that's what they had to do. Well, they had and, to find and, some and way. You gotta think about it, right? Like the whole purpose, and shout out JC, him and I used to talk about this all the time, and you had you, you and I have had conversations, right? People, you go on like Castle Rock Talk or whatever, and everybody's like, I remember when I lived in this town in yeah. 1972 and the only traffic I had to worry about was a couple of damn elk, right? Yep. I wanna go back to the olden days. Here's the deal. You're not. As a city, you're not. If you are not growing, you are dying. Yes. 100%. So how do you grow? Mm -hmm. You attract people to come in. Okay. Yep. So is it does it behoove the state of Colorado to have higher business tax, higher property tax to bring people in to grow? No. It doesn't. So no. they're they're gonna do something. Yep. But mm -hmm. it's because of Tabor and yep. tax rate voting, mm -hmm. it's up to you guys to do your research and figure out what makes sense for you in your situation. Yeah, so, exactly. Tabor. Exactly. Tax. Tabor. It's an acronym. Mm -hmm. um, shit. It's Bill of Rights. It's, it's your Bill of Rights. It's, tax, it's, it's tax, uh, yeah. Taxpayers, taxpayers Bill, Bill of Rights. Bill That's of rights. what it is. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and with that said, I, my knee-jerk reaction always is if they're cutting me a break, I put on the brakes. I, I, okay, where yeah, am where, I going to pay for it later? Yeah. Is it going to hurt later, right? So like with an HOA, if something needs to be fixed, there's going to be a special assessment mm -hmm. and you're going to pay for that the next year, next month, whatever that looks like. Sometimes it's monthly. Yeah. And, and, and if your portion is six grand, you got mm -hmm. three months to pay that six grand. That's going to offset a lot of people. Obviously the mm -hmm. government doesn't do at, at that. Right. That ridiculous. But if it does, it's going to suck. I rather let's tackle it now mm -hmm. because we all yeah. know that when 
they need money, they move fast. But yep. when they need to figure stuff out, they move at a snail's pace. Well, and Oscar brings up- Hopefully, hopefully it, it's faster. Yeah, you bring up a great point though, right? So let talk. we talk about uh, school funding. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. As of 10 years ago, based on the fact that we're getting less and less and less in property taxes from yep. residential, the burden of funding schools, uh, the state of Colorado started at like 20, 30% mm-hmm. of school funding was from the state. Okay. Yep. Back 10 years ago, 10, mm-hmm. 15 years ago, it's up to 60, 65%. Yep. Right. Which so is huge. What is that taking away from? Is it infrastructure? Is it mm-hmm. fire? Is it police? Is it whatever it is? Yep. There's a balancing act that has to happen. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, right, because you can't, we've seen it. What happens when we print money? Yeah. It's yep. not good. <laughs> It smokes, is sometimes not maybe good, sometimes <laughs> maybe shit. Most of the time, it's shit. You can't print money. Okay, yep. it's inflation. That's what we're mm-hmm. dealing with right now. So if you can't print money, you got to balance it and say, okay, what is important to me? And individually, that's all you guys can answer, right? If it's yep. schools, because you've got some young kids in middle school, mm-hmm. elementary school, and you're moving here, then vote that and make sure you do the research. If yep. it's infrastructure, because you're a millennial that's coming here for a tech job and you want to make sure you've got you know, light rail access and good highways and whatever it is, then Mm -hmm. vote on that sense. But don't just look at it as, well, what's going to take the least amount of my money? Yeah. That's the wrong way to look at it. Look at it and say, what's important to me? That is a great point. And understand that there's going to be a trade-off regardless. Mm -hmm. And if you vote and what you're voting for is going to benefit you and your personal situation, your family situation, whatever it is, then you've you've done all you can. Well, and 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 again, that brings me back to- Keyword, vote. Yeah, well, and that brings me back to what I was saying earlier about the gentleman who said- yeah, you know, like I know, oh yeah, that's the thing that we did to increase school school funding, mm-hmm. right? I'm not, we're not knocking anybody for focusing on one element of, on no. of something, right? No, no. But understanding that there are multiple elements that play into taxes. Multi-faceted. And Much allocation like of money. Cat. Right? Yes. Damn straight. <laughs> um, and, and there's so much that goes into it, but just as an example, right? <clears throat> it also comes down to voter sentiment. Mm-hmm. So as just as an example, right? The guys, The guy that I spoke with about the taxes said, hey- where, where, you know, it goes towards schools, right? Okay, last year, Colorado introduced a bill to be voted on that would increase taxes on marijuana because they would use those to fund after-school mm-hmm. activities and, and school funding. Yeah, don't we have marijuana to offset all this right? shit? Well, <laughs> but, it's, it's not well, federally legal, so there's... Yeah, really, eh? but, <laughs> but here's the interesting thing about it. You know, a whole state can launder Col- money technically. Col- Isn't that crazy? We, right? we have been. That's well, what I'm saying. <laughs> here's, so, so here, but here's the crazy We're part. We're the Ozarks, but right? in Colorado. Hell yeah. <laughs> School is good. School is good, right? But that, on the front end of it, you look at it and you go, oh, that's great. Yeah, let's use people who, let's use weed money to help build the schools out. That was what was promised to Coloradans when they made weed legal. Hey, you're going to see this benefit. Lo and behold, Colorado residents shut that bill down because- they didn't feel confident in seeing that money allocated mm-hmm. towards the things that were going to be, that said they were going to be allocated towards. So yes, it, it is on you to, to look up <clears throat> where the money's going and how it's going. But also, it's very important to understand at a deeper level how that's going to help the greater good. Yeah, and right? you know how you can do that? Talk to your local legislator. Yes. Absolutely. Send them an email. We get those phone Call calls. Them. We are going to have a, yes. a town hall yes. meeting. Get attend. on that meeting. Mm-hmm. Attend. Attend it. Go. If you can't Absolutely go, attend. get on the phone and then mm-hmm. you ask some questions. We were talking about this yep. earlier. I mm-hmm. question everything these days. What do we say and on this podcast all the time? Knowledge is power, right? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And and you know, you said sentiment. It's all about demographics, guys. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Demographics means everything of if something's going to be passed or not because there's a generational gap between, yep. you know, the generational gap and the... What am I trying to say? What their beliefs were yeah. are, are by far There's lifestyle so differences. different. Yes, lifestyle differences. because if mm-hmm. if you say they're going to go to school, and a certain ge- a generation doesn't have kids, they have dogs. Yep. Fuck those schools. Exactly. Hey, I'd sent my dog to school. Hey, you have both a kid and a dog. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. You Two know, it's all about kids. sentiment and and what's going to exactly. pass, and it's all about demographic mm-hmm. and demographic. Well, is, think about it. You, it, it, you know the dude, suburban and rural a, area. That's a perfect thing. So think about college, mm-hmm. right? This is, man, this is going to be a little bit of a tangent. We'll bring it back. I promise. Bear yep. with me. But I've had this conversation with Caitlin before yeah. uh, around, like, what do we do with college? Mm-hmm. Do we send Kieran to college? Is it worth it? Yep. So if a bill comes across and I go, you know what? This is to increase state funding for uh, colleges like CSU, blah, 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 mm-hmm. versus, hey, there's a bill that is going to fund vocational schools yep. and technical schools mm-hmm. and green energy schools, and they're, they're a little bit smaller. Right now, I would be more inclined to vote for something 
that is very career specific, yes. chemo medical institution, whatever it is, mm -hmm. because Welding. in my world, I look at it and I go, man, be honest. If I didn't go to college and mm -hmm. I started real estate when I was 18, I'd be a lot better off. First off, <laughs> this would just be like a 19th of my house. Yep. Right. <laughs> yep. I didn't know that because I had a certain plan. And again, Oscar, the reason I bring it up is because Oscar generationally there's yep. differences, right? White picket fence. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And mm -hmm. I, I do love my white picket fence. I do wish it was privacy sometimes, but yeah. it is what it is. <laughs> um, but that's that's a real thing. So if yeah. a bill comes up and says, hey, we're going to take funding away from, from state-sponsored large institutions and put them into state-sponsored vocational schools, mm -hmm. I would almost vote for that Yeah. Exactly. versus before I had a kid or before mm -hmm. I went to college, I probably would have voted against it. So things change. Yeah. Well, we had that conversation over the phone. Yeah, it yeah. was, it, institution wasn't yeah. set up for that. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I mean, again, this, this all leads into, and Oscar brought it up multiple times already, but yeah, so, he's like, can you get on with the, so, what's going to happen? So Do we have a solution right? people. So right. what's going to happen? Right. And uh, yes, there are multiple pieces of legislation that are on the table right now to address it. That will, and can come up in November, but we want to address what, if you're a Coloradan, you've been seeing on the news, on your news feeds, um, social media, whatever it is, is Governor Polis mm -hmm. introduced his own bill. Please excuse me. I don't remember the, the number of the bill. Jameson, do you have it? No, I don't. It's a, it, I don't. SB12 something. But yeah. just look up Governor Polis' introduction for, for property tax, right? And we wanted to cover that because, again, okay, you repealed it. So what are we doing? What, 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 how are we going to fix this, right? So virtually what we want to do is kind of discuss the idea and then we're going to give you a pro, some maybe a pro and a con on it um, for, from our perspectives, right? I have a stat. Ooh, stat man, bring it in real quick. Go for it. Right before you transition. So back to what we were saying, Rob Paul to pay Peter, yep. Rob Peter mm -hmm. to pay Paul. Whoever wants to get robbed, whatever, I don't care. That's a, <laughs> that's a king. Someone's whatever, getting robbed. Yeah, whatever you want to do. <laughs> so here, here's a statistic. Mm -hmm. uh, had the Gallagher amendment stayed okay based on home valuation increases yep the projection was by lowering the tax assessment rate to 5.88 percent mm -hmm. would have contributed to almost 500 million dollars in budget cuts to schools mm -hmm. in the state of colorado yep. hitting hardest rural underpopulated areas yep 200 million budget cuts to county governments. Mm -hmm. And as we've it's seen- It's not a and, black and there's a and lot of issue. schools shutting down. That's what I'm saying. It's exactly. not a black and white mm -hmm. issue, but like when you talk about, when I'm in Oscar and I have uh, at least one that's same age, obviously you got a couple older, you'll have some eventually maybe. Like if I'm looking at sending Kieran to school and I'm like, okay, $500 million. And then you say, mm -hmm. okay, out of every middle and high school in Colorado, what is that? amount to yep. like somebody's got something that says that's eight less computers or you know 45 percent less books mm -hmm. or 20 percent less after school activities yep. or or it might know, mean or fuck dude, whatever it, it is it, it, it might be, not shut it, down think yeah. about it it could be uh bus drivers yeah well i can't get my kids to school oh, oh okay so my point it, is it affects here yes. Mesa. Mm -hmm. so it, it's a that dude's it's on a vacation all the time if you're watching this god damn it give us a heads up it's a complicated <laughs> multifaceted issue mm -hmm. and it's not black or white i know people like to just they, they cling on politics to the black are and never white black and white it's, easy. Yeah. it's not right no. like there are some things that gallagher did it did it save homeowners a shit ton of money they could reinvest into whatever yes. it's 100 percent. does it also affect our schools for our kids 100 mm -hmm. percent what side are you on? It could be very different. You guys are entitled to your own opinions. Yep. I'm just saying, and Charlie and Oscar are all saying, do your research, yes. question it, mm -hmm. and make sure you, you just make an informed decision. Yeah. So, it's going to affect you one way or another, so it's going to it's gonna affect your, your vote, yeah, right? Absolutely. And, and nothing is right or wrong because, again, I have kids. It's, I don't really care a whole lot about that. I have a plan in place. Let's go. You may not have kids. And you might think that is important for you. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it double coin. I and, mean, and, and Charlie's about to go into, you know, what some of the solutions are. Mm -hmm. So here's, here's another, and this is like a big picture thing, right? Yeah. Everybody, when you look at Colorado and we've mm -hmm. talked about this on previous podcasts, we always talk about the growth of Colorado, yeah. right? Like it is a economic hub. Mm -hmm. We have the lowest, very, very low employment. We have very, very high paying jobs. We've got one of the highest percentages of educated uh, college educated individuals. We've got our median income, like all that stuff, right? Yep. Okay. So there's 64 counties in Colorado. Mm -hmm. Okay. There are 64 counties, right? Hugo's in 
one of the tiny ones. Larimer. I but will. I, I will own. When that we talk million. about growth, we say, okay, property values are going up in Colorado as a whole, <laughs> right? Yep. Okay. So here's another stat corner <laughs> of the 64 counties in 2019. Right. So right before COVID happened, and even then, it still didn't affect them a ton. 39 out of 62 counties saw less property tax revenue in 2019 than they did during the Great Recession. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the statewide per Mm -hmm. capita saw an increase of 10%. So what does that tell you? What it tells you is we are very concentrated Mm -hmm. within Douglas, Arapaho, Jefferson, Jeff Adams, El Paso, Adams. Mm -hmm. Like those are the big ones, Mm -hmm. right? What we don't understand is if I live in Douglas County like we do, and Mm -hmm. you live in uh, Adams, Adams, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, I've got my family lives in Jeff. Well, I mean, then you have the skewed mountain resorts, right? No, but that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So what we look at, we go, oh, we're thriving, right? Mm Because yeah, big picture, we're thriving. Yep. But 39 to 64, I'm not great at math. That's more than 50%, (laughs) is it not, ladies and gentlemen? So Mm -hmm. 39 to 64 counties in Colorado of a state that has, I think, four and a half million residents are taking less in tax revenue than they did during the Great Recession. And we expect them to continue to fund police, fire, school, water districts, et cetera. Well, and again, Mm -hmm. there's there's, there's skewed statistics too because you have Adams County, Weld County uh, taking in um, income from fracking and and oil and gas. And then you yes, and go to be even fair, further. This is this and you is go, just, you go, this you go, is just property tax, right? And then yes. you go further out yes. east, and then you have Bennett and all those that are agricultural, correct? Yep. So yes. I mean, again, do your do your homework. Yeah. There's there's it's a deep dive into what may or may not affect you in the long run, mm-hmm. but have an informed decision. Yep. Yes. Agreed. Yep. Sorry, that was my last stat. I like it. I like no, it. It, but it, but it was it was, it was, it was spot yep. on on yep. on yep. a lot of that stuff. 100%. And again, there's uh, grab a dictionary. Because you need to define every single, whether it's an acronym or or Mm -hmm. word, per capita. It's used for stats. What does it mean? Per head. Mm -hmm. Per person, per capita, Mm -hmm. right? They use these fancy words. Grab a dictionary. Really, really dive into it. Make sure you understand and make your decision. But make a decision and vote. All right. So, Jamo, go ahead and give give us an outline of of what uh, Polis Polis introduced as a a relief. So, here... Yes, I will. And I'm going to do this with zero political affiliation. Yes. This mm-hmm. is just what the bill proposes. Exactly. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let me get my reading Ooh. glasses out. <laughs> All right. So oh, you're, 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 you're at that age. <laughs> here's the deal. Okay. So my uh, doctor says. So the, the plan itself is a decade long plan. That's the hope, yep. right? They, wanna, uh, they want 10 years mm-hmm. to give relief because they believe that property values will continue to increase, right? Yep. And then after the 10 years, they're going to reassess and come up with something different, but it's at least a like a sunset plan that gives us a decade to figure shit yep. out, essentially, mm-hmm. right? Sunset, sunrise, that's yep. when you're doing So the meeting. first thing is they want to cut the average homeowner's tax increase that we're looking at yep. in half. Mm-hmm. So if you're looking at a $1,000 a year tax increase, they want to lower that to 500, 500. right? Uh, they want to reduce the residential assessment rate, again, from 715 to 6.7. Mm-hmm. Uh, to your point earlier, Oscar, does not affect second homes investments. Those will stay the same, which I agree with. And we'll, touch, we'll to. touch on that after. Um, and the big one is they want to decrease the taxable value, mm-hmm. not property real value, taxable yep. value mm-hmm. by $40,000. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's that's a big one because that's going to, like again, give you that break and contribute to mm-hmm. paying less property taxes. Yep. And the fourth one that I don't think is talked about enough, but with an aging population, I think it's super important, mm-hmm. is if you guys don't know what this is, it's called the homestead exemption. Yep. Oscar, you know what the homestead exemption is? No. Tell so me. a homestead, homestead exemption is for senior citizens. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. If they own a home and they sell it, they can write off an additional, right now, $100,000, right? Yep. Outside of capital gains, as long as they've lived in there for the last 10 years um, and they're over 65, I believe is what it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but currently, once you do that, and let's say you're 67, you want to downsize, go to a townhome. Once you use that exemption, it's gone. You can't use it again. Yep. This bill proposes that not only can you continue to use it and claim it mm-hmm. if you want to, but it's going to go from 100000 to $140,000 exemption. Yep. Which well, in an aging population, mm-hmm. 
I was and, brought up well, to respect my elders. And, 100%. I didn't say. and so not was only I. that, and, not and only and on the real estate standpoint, you yeah. got you got to look at um, if taxes are stupid, ridiculously lower for mm -hmm. that property. It's because it's a senior exempt. Well, and not only that, but now think about think about the grander scheme of things, right? And and we talked about this, you know, prior to the podcast, but we also we we've been talking about the the amount of home growth that happened since in the last five years, right? So if you think about it, that forty thousand dollars that you know, you basically get to deduct from from mm -hmm. that value is there to try and offset some of that extreme growth yep. that we've seen. Therefore, on the back end, you're getting taxed more so on a realistic number rather yes. than rather than this, this crazy, crazy inflation 30, that yeah, we did. Crazy 30 to 40, 60 Correct. percent that we've seen. Right now, with that being said, you know, you hear that and you go, oh, OK, there's regulation. Yeah, we're kind of we're kind of capping it. We're, we're holding it down again um, for the next 10 years. So, okay, if that's what it's doing, then then what are some of the pros and cons, right? What, what's gonna what's gonna come of this? Well, and the, a, a decade, ten years, a, Long a lot time. can happen in those ten years absolutely. because as of right now, I think the market still needs some adjustment. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, I'd love to see another five, ten percent. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of adjustment. So in ten years, hopefully, yeah, we well, regulate somehow. If, and if something else doesn't happen, well, you and know, on that's, that note, that's, right, that's with Jameson, an important factor that you know you talked about again with the Homestead Act is what is we've talked about it on the podcast before with the way that interest rates are. Are people very motivated to sell their house? Absolutely right now? not. But if somebody is going to be able to then get more of a break, correct, on selling the house, and it is the older population who ah, I was here when there was Elks crossing the road. I was there too, right? Yeah, but, but, yesterday. but who? Who would benefit the most from that? Somebody who bought early on in their life and now has so much equity in the home because of the property value growth. Correct. Oh, lo and behold, could that could that add more inventory? To, well, to, well, I mean, to, think about it, right? To our, to the, our market? Me, the median income in the United States, I think is $56,000 a year, mm -hmm. right? So you're talking, if I sell my house, I can make an extra, essentially, yep. 40 grand. Yeah. Right. Yep. That's that's a year's salary for some people. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, there, there's a couple other things. Right. So the other the, the other two big things that I saw, you know, what? before I forget, remind me no, to talk it. about the whole college thing, because okay. I about threw up this morning. <laughs> um, so they want to cap the district property taxes yep. uh, from increasing beyond the rate of inflation. Yep. That's 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 an option. Right. Yep. Which uh, as that goes down, that will also lower. Mm -hmm. um, and then from a Tabor standpoint, again, Boom. taxpayers bill of rights, mm -hmm. we get a refund. They want to allocate. Mm hmm. Um, a certain amount to offset, because think about it, we just said it, right? It, schools get funded by property taxes. Yes. So if we lower property taxes, it's ipso facto mm -hmm. less money for schools. Yep. So Dodge what they want to do is they want to say, hey, you know what, Oscar? Instead of me giving you a $900 refund at the end of next year, we want to take that $900. We'll give you $300, but we're going to take $600. We're going to put it back into schools. Okay. Yep. And this is where... Yes. The collective good comes in. Well, people. and this is where, before we get ahead of ourselves. But anyway, I refund. I well, haven't seen a refund in 10 years. <laughs> Either, well, I got one last year. Yes. Yeah, I got a 750 one. last year. I got, yeah, I got 750,000. Right? Or 750,000. 750, Jesus. Right? 750,000. Um, anyway, but, the point is, it's that that is the other two pieces. Yes. They want to cap it at an inflation rate mm -hmm. for residential and business, yep. hopefully, after 10 years. And then they want to take Tabor and use part of those surplus funds yep. to backfill the funding mm -hmm. for school, fire, police, EMS. Et so, so now let's talk, you know, that, that is the basis of, of what this plan has in order, right? So again, we're going to do this as unaffiliated politi politically as possible, but we want to address some of the pros and some of the cons of, of what this could bring, right? Okay. Obviously the first pro that we're going to see based on what the bill is proposing is you're not going to pay as much upfront with your pop property tax. And there's a possibility for this to help. I don't. I, I'm so scared of using the word subsidize, but in order to help these backfill. back there, okay, backfill school systems, infrastructure, and stuff like that, right? So though though that those pros right also, there. Also, I'm not gonna lie. Like subsidizing the education system. Yeah, it's only I'm gonna benefit us. Fine with that. It's, it's only gonna <laughs> like, benefit the rest of us, right? Yeah. Um. And and I think it's. I think on the pros, it's an it's an important note to say that again. If you're just looking at certain articles, certain things, and you read them and you see, oh, wow, I'm going to pay less in my taxes. School is going to get more money. This is wonderful, right? A lot of people are going to go down that route. But if you if you do take the time and, again, step back, get the grander view of things, don't be affected by 
the, the money of it or, or the thought of who am I voting for and mm-hmm. where is this coming from, yep. you will see that there are some cons that begin to be presented, right? And I will say one thing that I think is overlooked a lot when you read through this, uh, this bill that, that Polis has uh, proposed is that in order to capitalize on this bill, you must, the individual must take it upon themselves to get it assessed at the proper value. If you do not do that, by a professional assessor or whatever it be, you are then subject to that number that was on your card that you were given, the, the, the guesstimated amount that the government gives you. I'll put you on the spot. You put me on the spot. How likely is the, the, the consumer? You've been here for a year. How likely is a consumer going to do that? Uh, well, so I get, I'll give you two parts. One, not likely. Two, I don't think it's going to help. Well, and here's the thing. The reason that I brought it up is because, go back to the people that I asked, Four people were homeowners. Only one of those four knew well, what the hell was so, going on. So hold on. So we're talking about pros and cons. That's twenty five percent of the population. Right. If you take the four, <laughs> yep. that's less than that. If you take all eleven. Mm-hmm. Well, my rule is ten percent. So, but, well, it, but the other, the other, you know, the other, what was it? Seven people. They're renters. Right. So when I looked at them and I was like, "Hey, do you know what's going on with property taxes?" They were like, "No, I don't care." But guess what, guys? You're we're talking, gonna get affected, right? Pros and cons. <laughs> it's easy for someone us to owns step that back. house. Exactly. It's easy for us to step back and go, "Oh well, oh, I don't know property. I'm not gonna be affected by that." Who owns the property that you're renting from? Is the is the business tax the, not the, gonna be affected la- by the this? Landlord, landlord, right? He's gonna yeah, pass that cost on to right? you. So there, another con is the possibility of renting going up because they will need to supplement these these advanced fees because like Jameson said, this will not affect secondary homes and rental units. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're so, not going to get a break. Right. Yes. So they're yeah, not going to yeah, get a break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're yeah. going to continue to go up even if this is voted on, right? right. They're going to continue to go up, which even if you don't own property, that could lead to you paying higher rent. It could. I got the another f- controversial one. Yeah. Right. So let's, let's, let's talk about this. So let, let's say this bill passes. Okay. Mm-hmm. And essentially what we're doing is we're taking Tabor yep. and we are, instead of giving people refunds, we mm-hmm. are backfilling the taxes that we are not charging homeowners mm-hmm. to, again, not subsidize, subsidize. Yes. but backfill yes. schools, et cetera. Mm-hmm. The argument for me would be, okay, well, let's say I am a renter mm-hmm. and let's say I am a small business owner and let's say I am, you know, whatever it is. Well, if I don't own a home, I don't worry about property taxes. Yep. So Tabor refunds go to me and my pocket directly. Mm-hmm. What this bill would do, and again, playing devil's advocate, mm-hmm. would essentially take that refund out of my pocket, fund schools, whatever it is, mm-hmm. but benefit homeowners specifically. Yes. In which case, as a renter, mm-hmm. not only am I not getting benefited from Tabor, mm-hmm. now I may face well, higher rent. And, and here's the well, thing. And, and that's just it. it to your homework. Well, and, and, but here's the thing. I, I will tell you, and again, I understand I am one. I'm giving this as the devil's advocate. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah. I think but, we all are yeah. because we, we're, we're taking kind of, I don't want to say extreme examples, but well, now you're paying for something that I, I, I'm well, benefiting no, no, from. Here, here, let me, I am of, and again, I understand I am one person in the grand scheme of pool of people that there are, but I am this person that you're talking about, right? I rent and I do not have kids. They right. can't single out one single person out of here. Right. So they're going to group us in yes. and Find out what that mm-hmm. grouping is going to look like for you. But, and we've talked about it multiple times, comes down to financial literacy, right? Mm-hmm. And ultimately, for me, as somebody who is renting, as somebody who doesn't have kids that has to worry about schools, when I step back and look at the grander scheme of things, I go, okay, am I going to get less money back from Tabor? Yes. But recognize, please, especially as somebody who moved here, that Tabor is rare, Yes. And Tabor is a in a way a privilege that we get as Colorado citizens, right? We were never guaranteed that money in the first place. Tabor is there specifically to say, "Hey guys, uh we we know we taxed you a lot, so we're going to give you a little bit back," right? They didn't have to do that in the first place. So in my mind, I go, "Wait a second. Okay, so I'm going to get a little bit less back. I'm still going to get some. I'm going to get a little bit less back, but it's going to improve my infrastructure." It's going to improve the housing market overall and help people and give people and incentivize them to sell and or move. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going to hurt my pocket up front, but I am financially literate and I do not overspend. I do not. I have a budget and I recognize, oh shit, this money is just a bonus money to me. So I think about it like that. 
Either I get it or I don't. My finances are not dependent on that. And again, and I recognize that I am in a, a situation where I don't have to worry about it in that way. And there are people who are struggling. But in the in the grander scheme of things, I know that this will benefit in the future. And I'm not saying to vote yes or vote no. This is strictly a thought a, a thought Just experiment for vote, me. People? Exactly. Exactly. Also, I fucking love this conversation. It's this wonderful. is fantastic. I'm sorry. Yeah, we got to so question good. everything. It's so good. Yeah, we were talking it's about, so it's so I mean, good, the brief man. 20 minutes it, we were on the phone, we just so went good, deep dude. dove into a lot of shit. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. so good. Like, yeah. it, you guys just got to understand that it is, it, I, I keep using the phrase multifaceted, yeah. but mm-hmm. everything is so interconnected yes. that to take it face value or black and white or however you want to, mm-hmm. whatever euphemism you want to use, is just, it's selling yourself short. Yes. And question more everything. people- that sell themselves short individually mm-hmm. means that the state itself sells itself short. Yes. So, ultimately. And, and, and again, like you said, I may, I may not get that whole $900 back, but in the cool. long run, mm-hmm. is it going to benefit me because it's, they're not taxing this dude, which I don't pay monthly? Yep. And do the math. Dude, I was yeah. going to say, do you want to pull a calculator? <laughs> yeah. Do the math. <laughs> so what's what's yeah. $900 divided by $365 a day? It's like less than $2 a day, right? Right. And, so but if, if you're making... I, if I sit there and say, hey, Oscar, I have a challenge for you. Yeah. It's a fiscal responsibility <laughs> challenge. I want you to take your checking account and I want you to set up an automatic payment. And every day I want that payment to go to an Acorns account. Shout out Acorns. I've been using you guys for like 10 years right. and say, Robin I want Financial? you to deduct $2 a day into a savings account. Would you blink? No. no. And if you do, reevaluate the fuck out of your life. Okay? <laughs> Sorry, seriously. Yeah, I well, started but, running math right away. I was like, all right, $2 a day, 30 days of yeah, February, bro, like, it, is this a leap year? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. if you're telling me it's going to cost me $2 a day that I can save on my own and mm-hmm. I'm just not going to get it from the state of Colorado mm-hmm. to improve my education, my infrastructure, all the important things that make our society run successfully. Yep. I'm okay with that and right it, and, and, and and it's not it and it's okay to not be okay with that because totally you're gonna understand. have you're gonna have the humanitarian but person, i'm gonna tell you and you can have the analytical person yeah, and am. even the analytical person you you put the math in front of them yeah right. make a choice yeah mm-hmm. but do the fucking math and or go with your heart whichever well, one just I, do it and i think and i think that is a that is a great way to kind of cap the conversation mm-hmm. and, and kind of end it on the fact of it all comes down to the fact that we as the people in the United States have a right to vote, to learn, to ask questions, go online, your governor's office, your senator, they're all accessible via phone and email. Yeah, we're not North Korea. Yeah, hey, dude. We have internet here, people. Real, real time talk, I actually was on the phone with the attorney general's office. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I had, mm-hmm. I had a transaction where I needed to get those guys involved and they answered. Yep. I talked I was to on somebody. The phone. With Comcast customer service, <laughs> even harder to get a hold of. <laughs> no, and they have to they make you go through sixteen different automated prompts just to get to a person. You hit the wrong number, they get, oh, you know thank what? you for your call. They end the call again. The twenty minute phone call had this guy. We <laughs> deep dove into mm-hmm. it. Know your rights. Yep. Yeah. I was I was all up in arms because I'm reading the Bill of no, Rights. I, I love it, man. The I, Bill of Rights. I, I was I all up in arms so because hope, of my ba- hope, because of my background. I yep. hope this sparks conversation for yeah. you guys i really and again do. please like guys comment, you're not wrong us, whichever comment, side yes. you're on yeah whatever like, side you're you're not wrong comment yeah. tell us that we're wrong tell us that we're right tell us that we're batshit crazy mm-hmm. i don't care because in to me dialogue leads to knowledge yes and knowledge leads mm-hmm. to good or better decisions yeah. like fair assessments Yep. Whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But I hope that as you guys are listening to this, you're like, man, I don't know what the fuck are these guys talking about? Or yeah. I completely disagree. <laughs> and you know what? That's blah, blah, the first con. That's because good. it's just fucking confused the shit. I mean, yeah. but guess what? Google it. You have the yeah, at the, at the very learn. least, Google it yes. and see what makes and, sense to and you. And I think I, I think we kind make of, sense of it. I think we kind of did it already, but let's go ahead and get into a structured format. Move into our one rock takeaways. So <laughs> I'm about to play some public enemy. Right. I'm, uh, <laughs> we're not gonna no, 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 no. That's not public enemy. That's oh wait, that's the white people's public enemy. <laughs> no, we ain't gonna take it. Um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and start off with my run one rock takeaway. And, and I'm sorry, guys. I'm probably gonna take some of your, some of your fire on it. But Bitch. Right. the one rock takeaway that I have is it is your responsibility as an American c- citizen to have the privilege of being an American citizen, as bad or good as you think our government is, we are still a free country. We still have the ability to vote and we have Freedom of Information Act. You can look things up through the right channels. 
it is on us. It is our responsibility to take the time to research in order to feel like we are making the right decision, whether it be the right or the wrong based on your polit political affiliations. The only way to move forward in a positive and, and knowledgeable way is to educate yourselves. And something that our generation has that or my generation has or this time period has that none other did before. Did you just call me old? No, no, I didn't. No, you I you didn't. looked at me, you uh, said our no. generation, and then you Oscar, look away, and you're Oscar. like, at least no, no, my generation. No, Oscar, he said experienced. Oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> is Life experience. Yes. Is we have, again, I've said it on the last three ones, the last three podcasts, we have the world of information at our hands. You can access anybody at any time. Take that opportunity. Do so. Educate yourselves. And hey, if you want somebody to talk to about it that's not going to judge you for it, we're right here, baby. That's my one. No I'll judgment here at all. Go for it. Who wants the next one? All right. I'll take it. Um, I'm going to go on such a tangent. Hold, go last. <laughs> hold accountable. Know your rights. That was a conversation. Charlie and I, he's a um, law major or minor. Criminal what, justice. Crim, mm -hmm. Criminal justice. And the CSI, whole bill. The whole, no, no. That, <laughs> that's another. That's forensics. Um, I was. Uh, it's an eye opener when you know what your rights actually are and how, how many times or how easily they're violated. Mm -hmm. Know your rights. It's not a privilege. It's your right to vote. Mm -hmm. Hold the people accountable. They will not. They, they'll, they'll push the boundary if you let them. Yeah. They do it every day. It's like Hold a them puppy. accountable. We are a government of, of the people for the people. That means we make the, the laws. They are in place so we could do our job mm -hmm. and we don't have to worry about it. Oh, man. Hold their asses accountable. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh. It's, just, it's funny. As you were saying that, all, all that came into my head is I had to learn the preamble. We the people in order to form a more perfect union establish us. Yeah, see, you know, what I, you know what <laughs> I learned? That's a North Carolina thing. I, I learned no, a Colorado that's song. That's the preamble to our constitution. Yeah, but is it sung that way? Yeah, yeah. No, we, yeah. We, we, rock, we learned. Baby. I learned, uh, at least I learned rock. a Colorado song. <laughs> Jack Black. <laughs> anyway. Hold, hold the people accountable. I know, just you, the know your rights. Washington Adams, Jefferson Adams, <laughs> Monroe Adams, Jackson. <laughs> I know we push the agenda of knowledge is power, but know your, know your rights. Just as, as a human being, we have a lot of rights here in Colorado, in the United States. Hold the people accountable. Vote not because you have to, because it's not even a privilege. It's your right. Well, the Go reason and voice your opinion and hold the people accountable because it's your right. The government works for us, not the other around. If you don't, and you don't want to do it, then yeah, they're it's the other way around. They're they're running complain, the though. they're they're yep. running the, they're yep. running the show, mm -hmm. and you can't complain. Can't complain. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a stick in the mud, go be a stick in the well, mud. And it, it's your right. The mud. Uh, well, no, honestly, I think it's come down, Oscar. You and I, you know, we we spoke about it, like you said, but it comes down to this herd mentality of my 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 vote doesn't. You mean matter. the elk that I saw crossing? The <laughs> yeah, but at the at the other end of that, it's ninety nine monkeys. It's, you get enough mm -hmm. monkeys to do it, it's exactly. going to happen. Exactly. So so yes, to me and Oscar's point. Whether you feel like it's futile or not, you have the right to vote. Exercise it's right. that right. And it's do your it. right. All right, Jamo, take us on the tangent. Take us on the ride. Here you we got, go. You, got, you guys ready to take Hold a on, left I turn? Need, I need, I need <laughs> some yeah. bourbon. All right, I'm going to wait because this is going to be a left turn. Right. Well, it's going to be it, awesome. It, it builds on it, but I okay. this is all right. Let's this is it. how my brain works too. So I, I apologize for anybody watching, listening <laughs> about what's about to happen. You have we are like three that Colorado, like that Colorado TikTok real thing said, agents yeah, with you, ADHD. You, you could walk <laughs> in my in my shoes for a day. Ugh, get right. in my mind for ten seconds. Do you, do you guys want to know my my one rock takeaway is? Let's yeah. do it. Chat GPT. Oh shit! Oh god! Here we go. All That's right. like crypto. <laughs> Let's go for it. You know why? Talk about. Guess. Oh man, because it because it has no emotion. Nope. Because it's gonna take my job. Nope. <laughs> oh. Here's why. Both of you just talked about educating yourselves, mm -hmm. right? Oh, okay. No, right, I got you. Okay. <laughs> Here's the thing, and Charlie said it. I, you probably said it six times. Mm -hmm. We have information at our fingertips. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here's here's my thought. Right. Again, left turn, but stay with me, people. I'm gonna feed you, baby birds. Uh, <laughs> if the argument is this. I don't have time to look at legislation. I don't understand what a bill says. I don't get that all this legal jargon, blah, 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 blah. Guess what you can do? You can take, for example, uh, Initiative 21, mm -hmm. right? Which is put forth by Advanced Colorado to cap property taxes, et cetera. Mm -hmm. There's a shit ton of legal jargon in that bill. Mm -hmm. It's about a page and a half long. Guess what I can do as a human being with a fucking laptop and internet? And a finger. I can, hey, hey, ChatGPT. I can copy and paste <laughs> mm -hmm. that bill into ChatGPT 
and tell ChatGPT to say, explain this to me as if I was a five-year-old. Yep. Okay? Mm-hmm. Not, I'm, I am not insulting anybody's intelligence. That's the How, easiest way to digest it. However, if I- Full disclosure, go, every time I talk to my tax account, I'm like, I'm three years old. Yeah. <laughs> if I can go back- Talk to me. And paste that in mm-hmm. to ChatGPT and go, please explain this to me in the simplest terms possible. Yep. All that is going to do is make you guys more educated on very, very current, important, impactful Mm -hmm. events, bills, amendments, whatever it is. And it's a free service, so there's no money involved. I pay 50 bucks. It requires internet and a laptop, which most people have. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, there's a mobile app, so if you don't have a laptop and you have a phone, which I've seen homeless people on the corner of Alameda and 225. Asking for a charger, it talking about it. I can charge my <laughs> phone. I'm like, what the fuck? Like you, what, when Charlie says, and this mm-hmm. is the reason I, it's a tangent, but it's not. Yeah. When we say that it's at your fingertips, mm-hmm. I can decipher Literally. whatever I need to. And if I have problems uh, synthesizing some information yep. on something complicated, mm-hmm. I'll put it into chat GPT and say, hey, explain this to me, yep. right? Mm-hmm. And it will. And, now, and that's all of us. All I've done, You'll be too proud to do it. All I've done is I have now educated myself mm-hmm. at my level to where I understand it. And now I can go forward and make an informed decision. Yep. Don't be proud. Just, you know what? If, if I don't understand something, I want it to explain to me in the simplest form so I could regurgitate exactly. the way I know how. And you guys didn't know where I was going with that. No, that, I mean, that was honestly, a good tangent. Was, I like woo! it. That, that, was that was better good. than I thought. You know I thought we were, uh, are we going down a wormhole, <laughs> rabbit hole? <laughs> Hall of Fame, baby. Yeah. Boom. Let's go. And it was Jameson. Chat, GP. Let's go. And, and it was Jameson of Let's all three go. of us. <laughs> Let's go. I ain't yes. fucking you stupid. You know, when, yes. it comes to, when it comes to taxes and it comes to legislation and and in politics, it gets... It gets cloudy, it gets murky, yes. it gets ugly, mm-hmm. but it doesn't mean it, it has to be complicated. Nope. Understand Great. what you're voting for. Understand what they're trying to shove down your throat. Don't take it. Ask questions. If it benefits you, vote for it. If it doesn't, kill it. And if you don't understand it, ask chat G P T. <laughs> Boom. Or give exactly. us a call. Yeah. Or and give I'll, us give, a call. I'll give you an earful of what I think. Yep. Exactly. 100%. You know, I'll give 100%. you the chat GPT version and then my unfiltered opinion. <laughs> Which, After we've been drinking. Right. And on that note, We've been drinking, right? Uh, and so I think it now is a good time to move on to our bourbon review. And uh, yeah, Castle and Key. Uh, can I start? Yes, please. Fuck yes. Okay, can, can we do a, a podcast that's similar to Drunken History? Yes. Oh. I love that show. <laughs> yeah, so Drunken awesome. Real Estate? Drunken, Drunken Real Estate. estate. Um, so I, I'm not going to lie, guys. First off, this is probably so we've done this is episode 24 uh yes yep Yep. Mm -hmm. so out of 24 episodes to me top three huh really top three from an enjoyable standpoint like i like when i go through i'm like oh did i enjoy the conversation is it whatever Mm. to me this was top three most enjoyable episodes oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. okay you're talking about the bourbon (laughs) hold on so i'm getting there okay my problem is i associate the enjoyment of the episode with the bourbon quality. Yes. So I am tempted to rate this higher than it probably should be. Because of the content. Because of the content and the enjoyability okay. of the conversation. And that's fair. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I, I, I equate it to like, if I were to go to North Carolina, mm-hmm. call it Boone, North Carolina. No, oh, Hogshead. No, Boone. <laughs> Dated a girl there <laughs> Boone, yeah. for a while. <laughs> Appalachian State. Yeah. Um, and WCU. somebody gives me know like your geography, a fucking people. bottle of Jack Daniels, right? Mm-hmm. But I'm in a cornfield with a bunch of fun people yeah. around a bonfire in a truck bed. That Jack Daniels is going to taste better than any Jack Daniels I've ever had in my entire life. I'll give you that. I, this is what I equate this to. This isn't fantastic. Mm-hmm. However, I've enjoyed this conversation so much that it tastes better than it should. So I am going to give it a four and a half. It's okay. I think skewed it's okay it is Rating, skewed. but it's, it's good. A skewed it's four okay. and a half right but it's, it's four a skewed and a half four and a half it, it is um and it's it, it's literally because like this conversation has energized me mm-hmm. oh yeah <laughs> um i don't think the complexity is here i was hoping that it opened up mm-hmm. i don't think it actually did the burn's still there which is actually impressive honestly after being open for mm-hmm. what an, an hour, hour and a half or whatever yep. uh there's some notes you know, I think it's, uh, this is an old fashioned. I think it actually would be fantastic. Smoke, oh yeah. The smoke burnt, old the bur- fashioned specifically. So the simple syrup and the bitters will oh, dude. take yeah, care I of the burn. I think it'd be great. Um, I paid 52 
I think for it. So okay. mid range, right? Yeah. There's other fifty, sixty dollar bottles that I would enjoy more. Mm-hmm. So four and a half, five is where I'm at. But I mean, I could drink this around, you know, a fire pit with you guys and mm. talk real estate all day. And, and we like, will, this. we will do a well. No, <laughs> what I'm saying is a like, night I'd episode. Like, I would probably leave that angle. This is the greatest night of my life. Yeah, that's where I'm at. That's understandable. Yep. That's good. That's one hundred percent. Oscar, like you want to take it or? Um, the topic was so all over the place for me because one, I, I'm at least a little bit more, I indulge in the topic at least a day or two before. Yeah. Because if I, if I have more than a day or two, then I get in my own way. And it's kind it, of fun just walking in blind though. No? So I walked in a little blind. <laughs> yeah. So I was, I was more on the topic and, and how it affects everybody yeah. as long we don't want to go political with it, but it's always going to be political as yeah. long as there's amendments and, and rights. Yeah, what, what voting is involved. It's political, it, it's political as shit. Yes. So it was like, mm, walk that line, walk that line. But the bourbon itself, it 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 did its job, and it was it was I, never at one point where I was like, ugh, I, I enjoyed it. It's good. It's probably going to be on on the rotation. I I, mm. I, I enjoyed it. I liked yeah. it. Uh, is it the best? No. Is it the worst? Absolutely not. Ancient age. Uh, ancient age is like a <laughs> fifteen. <clears throat> I need a, a, wa- a gallon of water yeah, and some man. ice on that bitch. This one, four and a half is is, is harsh. I, w- I would go with the straight four. Wow. All right. So uh, I wasn't it, off it, base. Yeah. yeah. Four, Actually, four is, I was a little high. Yeah. Four is good. Right. Four, it's it's a right. good bourbon. It tastes good. I I actually can taste some of the complexity and some some of the it's fruitful fruitful vanilla notes, apricot and vanilla. Yeah, I got it. I like it. It's good. Okay. C. Sardelli at Metro 52. C. Sardelli is going to give it. It's ju- um, Judgy McJudgerson. I'm going to say six. Five and a half. Five. Five. Five and a half. I'm, I'm nice. Five and a half. I'm going to say five and a half. <laughs> you were right, Jameson. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to, honestly, no. I'm going to give it a six. Oh. Wow. Why? I'm I mean, it it, it's. I, all right. But so, what about the experience? I, I have been you know, on a Nuggets bender, I, so maybe that's. <laughs> <laughs> hey, game tonight. Yes. Let's go, Nuggies. Let's go, Let's Nuggets. Go. Let's um, go. I, I'm going to give it a six only because I like. I, I liked, you know. There's no complexity. That's what it is. Yeah, it's honestly like it's, it's fire. Yeah, but not in a fire. good sense. It's fire. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's good fire. It's yes. it's good fire. But at the end of the day, but it has sophistication. Again, it I try lacks and, a fix. Uh, yeah, I always try and relate it overall to the bourbons that we've tried. Yeah. And to Jabison's point, yes, I, I'll be honest with you guys. I'm 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 shaking in my pants a little bit for how good this conversation was. Like it, it was. It's fun. These are the conversations that I want to have while I'm drinking bourbon, while I'm talking with good friends, right? Things that add value to, to, to life overall and give me more understanding. Mm-hmm. But as far as the bourbon goes, up front, like Jameson said, it almost bothers me that it, ha- this is my only, I, this is my only point. It, do- it has right? not gone away, has it? it no, right. I, I gave it hope that, mm-hmm. you know, it, it would open and and the, and the burn would decrease, but I kind of like that because it, it tells me, hey, you're still drinking. It was yeah. to me, it's like yeah. a Venus flytrap. Like once it closed, like yeah. Well, but but see, also, and it's I also try and always keep us keep it in the mindset of the fact that a lot of people that are going to look at our bourbon reviews yeah. are doing it to learn and, and try and grow in their bourbon sure. experience, sure. right? Yeah. So if I I feel like if I were to give it a better rating, those people may buy it, then take a sip and go, what the was he talking about, right? So for me, it was it's the burn that remained through. And again, they, they pride themselves on it. And that, to Oscar's point, yes, it tells you that you're drinking a bourbon and, and, it, and it does have a fair taste. But price point being around 50, mm-hmm. with how long it sat open, it just didn't get complex enough and the burn overpowered the flavor too much for me sure. personally. Nope. And yeah, that's an, not larceny. And, that, no, and, and, that's, and that's an important point to all of this is, again, this is my review personally as to how it is on my tongue. The heat lingers, it sits, it does not give way to those vanilla flavors. At the end, you do get a little bit of the sweetness, you do get a little bit of that, the tinge of the pepper, but overall, the burn just smacks me in the face too. Anytime much. you're going to have a heavy corn yeah. mash bill, seventy two percent white corn. That's mm-hmm. huge. You're so, going gonna to have a sour and or a burn. Yeah. Yep. So Charlie, high weeded, smooth. Let me ask you this then. Mm-hmm. Um, price aside, yep. okay. Let's talk cocktails. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. I think, me personally, mm-hmm. that this because of the burn would actually be great because my my compl- not complaint. I love old fashions. Yeah. Right. We've mm-hmm. done this on the podcast before. But sometimes they're 
they're sweet. Oh, like yeah. They're too sweet. Mm-hmm. And with complex bourbons, like you drink a complex bourbon because you want the profiles yeah. and you want it to kind of tell a story mm-hmm. to your taste buds. Absolutely. That's, that's kind of how I, how yep. I look at it, yeah, right? Yeah, 100%. 100%. With this, because the burn is so consistent, I think the compliment of it being in an old fashioned mm-hmm. or a similar type of sweeter cocktail Man would Man. actually be I was fantastic. Well, no, that's actually what I was going to say is where I would, I will give this credit and I get, and I know that if I added drops of water to it, I know that this flavor would get better. So right. this would be a good option for a higher end, better bourbon for cocktails yes it's a good cocktail yes. bourbon. And, and i think as a manhattan it would be fantastic uh, well, and that's, oh, manhattan my choice great. my choice manhattan would, is for this yes my choice vermouth. for this would be a manhattan right? is manhattan 100 yep. and and, and, yep. and for the viewers out there because you get that once you get the bitters in there yeah and it opens it up a little bit mm-hmm. like i think it would it would be a sippable the vermouth would would yes. cut that burn. but you got to get a good sweet vermouth yes. sweet vermouth bitters yes. bourbon mm-hmm Cherry, call it good. Old fashioned, yep. uh, bitters. Yeah, orange old fashioned. Zest. I, I, I struggle because old fashioned. Obviously, no sea be, vermouth, just simple syrup. But between, depends on simple syrup. Well, no. What or, I'm saying or, is or between like a, between old fashioned and Manhattan, right? The biggest difference mm-hmm. is you either have simple syrup or sweet vermouth. Yep. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And with this, I'm leaning more towards the sweet vermouth to balance it mm-hmm. versus simple syrup or a sugar cube. I would, I would make this if I was making this in an old fashioned. I'd use a honey simple syrup. Yes. That, yep. that's, I make my own simple syrup. Yeah. I'm very finicky with that. that shit. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. I'd, I would use, use, a, I'd use a sugar cube. Uh, yeah. Either, either, either a either, sugar cube honestly, or like and, and because the simple syrup just sugar cube. goes a little bit sweeter. Yeah, exactly. So I think the coarse, the, the, yeah. once you get the granules in there and like you sip mm-hmm. it, but I think as a Manhattan yes. square with the heat, I think it would balance. 100%. Fantastic. 100%. I, would, I, would, I would 100% on a business trip, I would get this, get a Manhattan, sit, and I would feel sophisticated yep. and like- and, and accomplish for drinking that, yep. that Manhattan. For Don't sure. be afraid of Talking about people, talking to people about property taxes. Texas. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yep. Guys, hell of a fucking episode. Dude, it, love it. it. Amazing. Absolutely so love it. on that note, guys, remember, like I said, how subscribe. Do we, wait, how do we get how do we get a hold of us? All right. So you can email us one eight hundred call your politician. <laughs> you can email us at R E S O T R at the mile high perspective dot com or give us a ring at uh three zero three five seven eight zero two. Six three on YouTube for you guys living in Colorado, the mile high perspective. And then we all have social medias. Oscar, where, the, where can they find you? Oscar the real doc, Oscar the realtor.com, Oscar the realtor, depending on what platform. Beautiful. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do something I never do, but oh, shit. Uh, do you have a tattoo? You can, no, oh. no. You can catch me at the lifting agent. No, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> at, it's true. He does lift. My at, Jones. <laughs> at the lifting agent on uh, Instagram and or TikTok. Be happy to talk with you there. Yep. And you guys can find me, the Colorado real estate guy, basically on everything. TikTok, Instagram, uh, on Facebook, Jameson Amros, obviously. Um, and we'd love to help you guys out, right? So yep. if you guys are watching, if you guys are listening, do us a favor. Give us a review. Helps us grow the channel. Reach more people. Uh, leave us a comment. If you guys agree to what we said, you have opinions on what's happening in Colorado, we want to hear mm-hmm. it. And uh, we, we, we want to respond to every single comment. Yeah, no so, judgment. I mean, nope. as much as I, I, I look a little bougie, it. I am probably the most outdoorsman up in here. I am uh, <laughs> yeah, ice this, this fishing. This motherfucker goes ice fishing and Oh, I'm always up it. in the mountains. I've seen it. Off-roading. I am dirty as hell <laughs> during the summer and in the winter. But mm-hmm. I like to look nice every once in a while, yep. so I'm a little bit of everything, and I love the arts. Yep. Don't let me get no, don't let me get started on the Alley Cockin Theater right. because I love those people. Well, on that note, guys, thank you so much for joining us. 100. Cheers, gentlemen, for a wonderful conversation. Thanks for hanging in there. With me.